from the After 9 Podcast Studios. This is After 9 with Scott and Kat. Hey now. Hello. Kat, how are you? Good. Long weekend is over. For our American listeners, I feel like every year we need to explain this. For the most part, Canada and America are on the same page. However, certain holidays don't line up. Mm -hmm. Thanksgiving is one of them. Americans celebrate Thanksgiving third week in November. We celebrate Thanksgiving second weekend or second Monday in October. I think we do it right. Like in this particular case, I think we do it exactly when we should be doing it before Halloween because now we can focus on Halloween. And then, of course, we switch over to Christmas, whereas they're still thinking about, you know, Thanksgiving preparations around Halloween and then still thinking about potentially thinking about Christmas, I guess, but but still thinking about Thanksgiving. It's kind of weird. It's too close together, in my opinion. Yeah, the U.S. Thanksgiving is right around Black Friday. That's so close to Christmas. So you get together with them at the end of November and then again, not even at the end of December. That's too much family. America, you got to change it. You should change it. We don't do everything right in this country, but this is one of the things that we do well. Mm -hmm. Did you have a good Thanksgiving? I did. Yeah, it was good. It was very low key. It was chill. You know what I want to ask you. I know. I know. Did you go to the medium? Of course. Yeah. So I I went with my aunt. It was like a psychic fair is what they're called usually, right? So when you want to, because you can book a medium for sure, but you never know what you're going to get when you do the private medium one-on-one things and they tend to be more expensive. So kind of a workaround is going to these fairs. And I never saw a medium before this long weekend. So my aunt is kind of into it. She's been before. So I said, okay, I'll go with you next time we go. So that was this past weekend. So we went and there were options galore. So I, it was kind of awkward at first because we did like a walk around to kind of feel them out. Did you get a good vibe from certain ones well, and not others? That's exactly what they tell you to do, though, is feel the vibe. Like you're told when you come in, you know, take a walk around, take your time, chat with each one. If, if they're available to chat with you at the time, have a chat with them, get a vibe, look for a sign or feel a sign that you should chat with this particular person. And everybody has like a bit of a different specialty. Like some were psychic mediums, some were tarot readers. One guy read Viking pieces, like Viking ruins. Viking ruins? Viking ruins. I did not talk to him, but he he so, read Viking ruins. So you found some ruins that you suspect are from Vikings and you go to a psychic fair and this guy tells you what was going on with these originally? It's not about what was going on with these. He reads them about you. Oh. You know what I mean? It's almost like tarot cards. Tarot cards are tarot cards and they all look the same to everybody, but they're read differently in front of you. So basically he's reading the ruins based on your life, your questions, your future. From Vikings. Yeah, I guess. I mean, I don't know. I didn't ask too many questions because I was like, I'm out. That wasn't for me. It just wasn't for me. So you're, you're walking around the psychic fair and you got the Viking guy over there and you've got Miss Cleo over there and yada, yada, yada. And, and you're trying to catch a vibe. Feel the vibe. Feel the vibe. <laughs> so you're walking around with this song <laughs> playing in your head and you're like, oh, that lady over there looks good, but this one gives me a better vibe and... Uh, That'd be a party. You know, it's crazy too. I mean, I I don't mean to say crazy. This was a very lovely woman. Very nice woman. When I was in line to get in with my aunt, we're standing at the door. We got to be like six people in there. You know, they had to, you had to pay to get in. So we're waiting in line for that. And someone comes by and it's like, oh, excuse me. Sorry. That was my cat that bumped into you. I was like, what? And I look over, and this woman had, I've never seen anything like this before. Have you seen these cat backpacks? Cat backpacks? It was like a clear carrying case for a cat that you wear on your back. And there was a freaking cat inside. No kidding. Like a shaved cat, though? What are they called? <gasps> Ooh. Yeah. One of those ones. Yeah. Like a hairless? It, yes, a hairless cat. And I was like, she's not kidding. She had a cat in there. Then we go inside, and again, we're doing a loop. I I walked around. I had to walk around probably, I had to have done it three, four times before I caught a vibe, okay? And I kept stopping to talk to the cat lady because she had her cat on the table. She was, uh, I don't believe it was a medium, though. It was uh, intuitive something, right? One of the, like, they're all different. But she had her cat with her, and the cat was just on the table, like, eating treats. Oh, and the cat poster, there's actually like a, a poster of the cat. Now, listen, if you know this woman, yeah, shouts out to her. I, I wish I had her name and I, I don't. But it was uh, it was interesting. So she used her cat as like her, 
uh, like logo, if you will, but this was the cat poster. Oh, dear. Look at that. <laughs> I know. That looks like that naked Trump doll they put up in Nevada. You know, it's something else. It's something else, but the actual cat was on the table. Here, I'll show you. That was the cat on the table. Isn't that distracting when you're trying to connect well, with a loved one and that thing is roaming around in front of you? I would think so. It was So anyway, I did not see this woman. And, you know, whatever. That's teach their own. Like, I think that the, she did have people that came to her and talked to her. So I did the rounds. Long story short, I ended up seeing three people. I ended up sitting down with three people. So the one I got an instant good vibe with right away, I couldn't get in to chat with right away. So I made an appointment, if you will. You basically put yourself in their schedule. And I said, sure, you know what? I want to talk to you at this time. Is so this I, like a sign-up thing or an Outlook document? Or it, it's, it's a sign-up. <laughs> like there. just a physical sheet. Sign-up oh. on their tables. Old technology. I love it. Yeah, just to show like this is my name. This is what time I'm going to be at. So I set a scheduled di- time with her because that was I instantly went to her. Her name was Cindy. So I thought, I want to be read by her for some reason. So I went with that. But then I had time to kill until my reading. So I walked around, and it was kind of like first person available. I was like, yeah, you know what? Fuck it. I'm here. You're (laughs) here. Let's do this thing. I sat down, and I was apparently a little too hard to read. And I thought, well, I what, what are we doing here? Uh huh. Yeah, and she. So the, her first, her first question to me was, "Do you do like you do? Do you do this for a living? Do what? You know, are you like do you have intuitive powers?" I was like, "I have no idea what you're talking about. I don't." She might be onto something, but okay, go I, ahead. Well, the, and can I just say she's not the only one that said it? So I'll tell you what else happened. So we're sitting there, and she's going. She's she's kind of doing this thing where she draws as she's talking to kind of I guess release whatever. So she'll, she'll bring up things, and she guessed right away, you have two kids, and kind of talk, started talking about the oldest, and I thought, yeah, that actually is bang on. That's my oldest. But it could be like one of those things that they just say. I don't know. Anyway, a couple of things aligned, but overall, she couldn't get past me because she was saying, like, everything is good with you. And I thought, okay, well, yeah. Like, I mean, I, I didn't come here because my life's in ruins. I kind of came out of curiosity to see what you have for me. She goes, interesting, but you have this power. Like, I'm just letting you know that you're a starseed child. And I don't even think you realize that. And I said, come again now? What is You're that? You're a starseed child. Yeah. Okay. So apparently I do have intuitive powers of sorts, but I had to channel them because I'm not even trying to channel them. So I can't actually use them. Will right you now, please fucking try and channel I will. your I know. starseed child shit? <laughs> <laughs> On list of things to do, channel Ma- starseed child shit. Make this work for us. <laughs> she said... Uh, but she said, listen, you're, you're obviously you're intuitive in general. Like, do you feel like you get a good read on people? I said, actually, I am. I'm pretty good with figuring out bullshit from not bullshit, if that's what you mean. She goes, yeah, there's more to it, though. You're not digging deep enough. So I thought, okay, fine. I, I, that could mean anything. And I moved on to the next person. So I sat down with the woman I told you I was drawn to. Right away, I sat down. She said, you're a starseed child. That's so interesting. And I went, how the, wait, how the fuck do you know that? She goes, oh, I just know. I could see your aura. Like, I could read it from a mile away. So it takes one to know one, I assume? I if guess. If you're also a starseed child, you can tell other starseed children? Exa- I guess so. You can feel them and, and know? I guess. So then I was like, tell me more. She said, you've got two kids and you've got girls and they both have it as well. Like, I'm seeing it. I'm like, how the fuck do you know this about me? Like, she actually blew me away a little bit. And then she started asking me. I mean, she didn't want to ask what I did for a living. She didn't ask any questions. She grabbed my hand, though. She was a physical toucher. Ooh. So she was one of those grab my hands while she was reading. That's how. That's her process. It's fine. She's a very nice lady. So she's holding my hand and going, oh, wow. Oh, wow. I'm going to need a pen and paper. For what? She starts jotting. I have it at home. I should have brought it in for you to see. She starts jotting stuff down about me like, oh. <laughs> and I'm like, what are you laughing about? <laughs> what is funny? But she, uh, anyway, she went on to tell me. So Starseed Child, for those who don't know, I'll save you a Google. I Googled it because I was like not entirely sure. Uh, are people in this mindset, okay, just run with it, guys. Run, even if you're like, this is baloney. I, t- I totally get it, but run with it for this context of the story. It's uh, he, human souls, right, um, or consciousness that pops from one person to the other. Essentially, it's like a belief in reincarnation. But you have no memory of your last life until you channel this. But I'm from another planet. Another planet? I'm not from, yeah, which is why she said, do you feel nice looking at the stars? I'm like, well, who doesn't feel nice looking at the stars? But do you feel like you belong? I'm like, I don't know. Like, what do you mean? She goes, your, your other planet is out there. And I was like, I, so are you call, what are you calling me? Am I taking this as an insult? Or, she's like, no, all, stars are, all starseed children never began from this earth. Your first life was not on this planet. It was on another one. So that's what So how what did you is. end up here? I got, however, however it happens. 
I was don't it a know. spaceship or you were born and uh, reincarnated on Reincarnation this Reincarnation essentially is, how, is like the best way I can describe it. Um, and the people around me have been in my past lives too. She said, you always find each other. You guys always decide in advance. Because I went with my aunt and my aunt had a reading with her and said she's great. She said, the woman you came with, you've been in another life before. But often you're as mother and daughter. And I thought, that's kind of weird because a lot of people think we're alike to the point where we're mother and daughter. This is my mom's sister, in case you're wondering. So you we are alike. You do look a hell of a lot like And her. we are alike. But she said, oh, yes, it's, you've been in many lives together. And same with your, your kids. Um, and you're Your good, kids as well. Apparently. But they're all, it's like, it's, it's just a matter of consciousness. Like, and we've been men and we've been women in this belief system, guys. Just roll with it. You were a dude at one point? Uh, maybe. Wow. Like she said that she, I mean, she couldn't. <laughs> it's a good time, isn't she it? She couldn't. <laughs> You can play with that thing anytime you want. It's probably how I got, that's probably how I died in my last life. I don't know. No, but she said it was, I know it was interesting. She was talking to me, my, my three spirit, um, uh, spirit guides, right? Cause you could figure, anyway, guys, I won't get too deep into it, but it was interesting. And then I saw a third woman again, right away. You have this power. Now, she was very interested in what I did for a living, though. She asked questions because she said, you are a healer and you need to be in healing. Like, you, you need to. And I said, well, I guess in a way, like, not to, stro- not to be ego strokers for us, but in a way, we are a part of people's day doing sure. what we do for a living. Absolutely. We help sometimes. I'm sure we don't help people every day all the time and certainly not like a therapist or anything, but we kind of do things along that vein, wouldn't you say? Kind of? Loosely. Loosely. Yeah. It, very it, loosely. It's not like we're saving people's lives on a day-to-day no. basis like healthcare professionals. No. But she was saying, basically, I, I should be doing that. And I said, well, kind of in a way I am. She said, yeah, you got to channel your... In-. Again, she said the same thing the last person said. And I said, there's no way they're saying this to all these people. So that, I was, it was very interesting in that they all said the same thing about me. Okay. Three words. Mm-hmm. Four words. Do you believe it? Uh, oh, maybe. I part of you know. wants to. I part can of see. me wants to because the, some of the things they were saying kind of makes sense. But am I just trying to, pe- much like Dave alluded to on the podcast Friday, and if you didn't hear it, he's not a fan of this kind of work. He believes that it's just taking advantage of people. I wasn't in that vulnerable situation, though, and I know what they mean because there was a woman that was bawling her eyes out. It clearly suffered a loss because there were there's Kleenexes going, right? I understand where he's coming from. With this, I didn't necessarily feel vulnerable in that way, but I will say there was enough said to me that I thought I could buy it. Does that make sense? I don't want to say for sure that I'm like, I'm a starsuit child, and I don't want to go telling people that and say that that's for sure. But I did find it very interesting that all of them were saying the exact same things about me. Okay, but you do also come with a healthy amount of skepticism. I do. And that's a good piece of your personality. Probably works to your advantage a lot. So knowing that you're a bit of a skeptic, but you wanting to believe what's holding you back. Is there some piece of information she couldn't give you or just more questions oh. that you have about your past? What planet are you from? Is it the one with the Ewoks? Right. It, where did you come from? <laughs> I would love to know. I don't know that answer. And how long have I been on this earth? I don't know that answer. Like that's, Those are things that they couldn't, none of them pinpointed to me. Do we, do you think, get a continuous amount of lives? Or do you think you die once, you reincarnate, and then you're done? Oh, I think if there's reincarnation, it's multiple times. It is weird that she brought up your kids because here on Earth in this current dimension that you're in, you gave birth to two daughters. She said they were with you in past lives, but not necessarily as your daughters, right? They could have just been a personality in your life. Exactly. Now they're your children. Exactly. Meant to look after them. Exactly. It gets deep. And then she said there was two more. And I said, two more kids? Like, I'm not, I'm done having kids. She said, no, 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 you could have had two more, but they're going to be your grandkids and you're going to have four of them. But two of them, you're going to know which ones are those. You sure she didn't mean me and Octavia? (laughs) (laughs) You know what? Maybe. (laughs) Maybe. (laughs) Two kids, but four dependents. Yeah. (laughs) Feels that way sometimes. So it was very interesting. I would definitely go again if if invited to go to this type of thing. And it was, you know, in the very at the very least, Scott, it was it was fun. It was a fun afternoon. Is it meant to be entertainment or is it meant to be educational? That's what I'm trying to figure out. I don't know how seriously I would take yeah. it if I went. In fact, now that you've gone, I'll give you the question that some people may be tempted to ask you. I'm thinking about going to a medium. Would you recommend it? I would recommend that one in particular. Really? I would recommend the one of the three that I saw. I would recommend to people. Will you go and see her again? 
I would go and see her again. I would probably wait like a year or something just to see if she says the same things that she said last time. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Does she have like a private location or can you only see her at psychic you, fairs? Or? You know what? Good question. I'm sure, she, I know she does all of the psychic fairs. And by the way, all those people that they use, apparently they're vetted and they have reviews and all these things. So they're the, the best ones are in this fair that travels in different cities. I think it was like in multiple cities the last few months. So you might have even seen them. But she... I'm sure she's available for readings. Of course they're going to make themselves available. That's kind of their job, right? Right. How uh, how expensive is it? So for the half hour, average price for most of them was $100. 100 bucks for half an hour is a good half hour's pay. It's a good half hour's pay for them, right? And they had some of them were just booked up solid for the whole afternoon. Making and I thought, big money. Good for you. Huh. But you have to be good enough. You know what I mean? You have to be good. Like some of the tables did not have a lot of people there. Do people know? Ah, don't go see that when they're shit. Well, yeah. <laughs> maybe. Is that we, the talk in the hallway? I mean, Is that the honestly, psychic bear? We were asking around. Like, w- my aunt followed this one poor man that was crying <laughs> out the door and says, Excuse me, sir. <laughs> Who did this <laughs> to this? you? Well, and I wanted to know too, so I'm glad she did. But, like, is, is she any good? And he said, She's very good. Okay. Oh, Interesting. Yeah. That makes me want to go. Yeah. So, did you tell her anything about yourself? No, um, no. So it was interesting because they all worked off different things. The the one that I saw wanted to know a couple of things about me in order to feel for things that they needed to tell me or warn me about, which there were never warnings at all. Um, one of them said I was going to live to 100. I was like, mm, I don't know about that. <laughs> but okay, interesting. So like some of the things I'll be interested to see what comes of it, whatever happens. And we'll, I'll never know. It's not like I can go back and sue them. That's true too. You know what I mean? Hmm. I'm excited about this. This is an interesting possibility. Could you see yourself making it like a tradition? Like every year in October we do this or uh, or like monthly appointments? Are you going to petition to get these uh, available to write off on our benefits? Like how are you going to do it? <laughs> that would be good actually because I spent a few hundred dollars. Hello, and I wish HR. I didn't. It's Cat Callahan again. <laughs> I got a new suggestion for the benefits. Uh, yeah, I, I would definitely go again though. I would. I, I truly would. Again, I'm not rushing to. Like I said, I'm not rushing. And so many DMs. Thank you for your DMs when we talked about it on Friday. I had people sending me links of people to see. So maybe I will. Maybe I'll dab- dabble around a little bit and see what I can come up with and see if I could figure out the best one and maybe do a little homework. If some of them are willing to do it for me at no cost, then I will happily review you on the podcast. How's oh, that? Would you that. do it? Would uh, you be open to it? Possibly. Y- you know, to me... I believe that there probably is something there. I can't put my finger on it. I don't know what it is, but I also don't know why we're here and how long we're here. If we were, this is just a stop along the way. I I don't know any of what's going on in life. Nobody does, except arguably maybe these people. I'm kind of afraid of what they're going to tell me. Right. Because I do have that little bit in the back of my mind that makes me think there's something to it, but... I don't necessarily want to hear it. And, and if they're wrong, I could completely change my life based on what they tell me and it wasn't right. accurate to begin with. So I'm a little worried about setting myself on the wrong path intentionally. Yeah, you have a good point. I think a lot of people would agree with you on that. They're okay. in the same boat. Uh, so it was a good experience overall. Yeah, it was fine. Yeah, it was good. Good, good. I would do it again. Good Thanksgiving? It was good Thanksgiving. It was very low key. I did uh, barbecue <laughs> at my parents' house, which is awesome. Um, no turkey dinners. I had no turkey dinners. Really? Yeah, we, um, so I had barbecue, and then I had uh, lasagna at my sister-in-law's yesterday. Fantastic. I, right? Good for you. Just different. I, uh, I'll try and summarize mine, because I was in the Ottawa Valley this weekend visiting my sister, who just recently moved up there, and the trip itself was like a sad reflection on where we are now. Right. I'll, I'll tell you about that in just a sec. When it comes to the food, though, turkey, two different ways. I had one deep fried turkey, finally had it. Oh, and? Brother-in-law made it, and wow, it was a home run. Okay. Real good turkey. I also had a sous vide turkey. Oh. In a bag. Yeah. What do you dunk? You dunk that in a pot? You put the turkey in the bag. You put the bag in the pot. Turkey's done in 90 minutes, and it was the most fall-apart, tender turkey I've ever had in my life. Do you stuff the turkey first and put things in the bag, right? Is that how it works? Uh, She stuffed it with, like, carrots and celery and stuff, not traditional stuffing. That was made separately. That was made with walnuts. My sister should get a Michelin star. I thought I was a good cook, and it turns out she's the talented one. She has experience in the restaurant industry, right? Uh, She did. She knows what she's doing. Yeah, before she started collecting taxes for a living. (laughs) Uh, no, no, exceptional cook, and I had a great time. Nice. Now, at the in-law's house yesterday, this was different. I'd never experienced this. I got there. They said, dinner's at four. So 
I got there at 3.30. Bit of a crisis unfolding in the kitchen. They just had, and I don't even want to guess how much this costs, brand new, built-in, double Gen Air ovens. Mm -hmm. Built right in, and cat, this thing is sexy. You can change the background on the oven. For example, fall, it'll just put up fall images on the outside of your the screen for your stove. I love technology. So fun. It's like useless, but awesome. It'll play music. Yes. You can download on it. It's great. It's perfect. Except when it doesn't work. <laughs> the crisis was this. I walked in. Hey, everybody. Hang on. We're dealing with something. The bottom oven, which is the oven that had the stuffing in it, Luckily, not the one with the turkey. The stuffing one locked. And when one of these ovens locks, it's very, very difficult to get it unlocked. We were trying screwdrivers and all sorts of stuff, butter knives, trying to unlock this goddamn oven. It was not coming unlocked. Finally, we figured out through a weird series of Reddit threads and Google searches, you've got to put it in self-cleaning mode, wait for it to get up to temperature, then cancel it, and once it cools off, the oven will eventually open. Why does an oven need to lock? Is this a safety thing for kids or something? Like, why are we locking ovens? I don't know. You'd have to phone the fine folks at Gen Air who ruined Thanksgiving dinner. I don't think, that my, <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen an oven lock before. It's crazy, right? Yeah, it locks, presumably for the self-cleaning because it gets too hot. So but someone, this, okay. This just defaulted for some reason to a lock. Weird, eh? Yeah. So the stuffing we didn't Aww. get to have until after dessert. <laughs> And that's a weird thing. When you were stuffed, oddly enough. When you were stuffed, that's so when we pull stuffing. out the stuffing. Okay. A little overdone, but right. delicious. So that was great. Uh, turkey, two different ways. Real good stuff. But when I was driving up to Ottawa, a whole series of events unfolded that got me thinking. Number one, I had a decision to make, like so many people do. If I take the 401 to get there, five and a half hours. If I take the 407, four hours and 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But that bill ain't cheap. But that bill's going to be like $100 for tolls. We got to buy this thing back, Kat. Like, I know. Buy the goddamn <laughs> highway back. Doug, this is a... Do we really want to just ruin people's lives and ruin people's vacations? Is that what the plan is here? Because if it is, I was, ready, like I was ready to drive right into the lake sitting on the 401 because I took the cheaper alternative. I took the 401 and it was... a. Uh, Gong show, and it took forever to get there. It sucked. But as I'm driving up there, gas getting progressively more expensive. Oh. I saw it at $1.45, then $1.47, then $1.49. Now we're up to $1.57 a liter, and it's even worse up there. It's crazy. I drove by an Algonquin First Nation Reserve. Big sign when you drive by it. Crisis. Opioid overdose alert. All these signs warning you about this drug thing that they've got going on there. Wow. It's a crisis, but there was nobody there. Like, there's, to me, if there's a crisis, we dispatch help. We send people, emergency services, counselors, whatever. Nothing. They just put up a big sign that said we're having an opioid crisis, but life was completely thinking normal. That, thinking that that would help? I guess there we go. the sign would help. There we go. <clears throat> My job's done here. You know, I mean, the amount of stuff, it, it's just crazy. But uh, I did mention uh, gas prices. Today is a day when we get our carbon tax rebates deposited. Do you get one? Because I, I don't think I do. I don't think I do. I think certain, they say eight out of 10 Canadians get back more than they pay. They say that. I don't think that that's true. I don't know who they, they asked, but I don't feel like that's true. So when you get some of your money back today, just keep in mind, you already paid it in carbon tax. This is just giving some of it back to you. And I thought that that's what we would be talking about today when the carbon tax rebate went into people's accounts. I thought we'd be talking about carbon taxes. No, out of the blue yesterday, just a total curveball from left field. It's a country rooted in the rule of law and the protection of our citizens is paramount. That's why when our law enforcement and intelligence officials began pursuing credible allegations that agents of the government of India were directly involved in the killing of a Canadian citizen, Hardeep Singh Nijar, on Canadian soil, we responded. Nous avons partagé nos inquiétudes avec le gouvernement de l'Inde et lui avons demandé de travailler I don't understand what he's talking about when he speaks in French and there's no translation. But he's talking about something with India, and I'm going to try and make sense of this as soon as the English part comes back on. ...tous leurs outils pour assurer la sécurité des Canadiens. 
aujourd'hui, ah, étant donné les nouvelles preuves présentées par la GRC, nous prenons des mesures additionnelles pour protéger les Canadiens. As the RCMP Commissioner stated earlier, they have clear and compelling evidence that agents of the government of India have engaged in and continue to engage in activities that pose a significant threat to public safety. This includes... So, are we in danger here? Because it seems like he's suggesting that the government of India is trying to kill Canadians. And he said they've already killed one of them, or they suspect they killed one of them. Now they're being investigated for two more. Now, because of that, India said, we've had enough of you. So they pulled their, their diplomats from Canada, and Canada pulled their diplomats from India. We seem to have started a bit of an international incident here with India, and a lot of people are asking, why? This came up last year, and nothing ever went anywhere with it. Why now are you making the India thing a big deal? S something, something new came to light, maybe? I, I mean, I don't know. Are we missing information here, or do we have all the info? Like, I'm wondering, who's this person that was killed? Where were they killed? On Canadian soil? And who killed them when they say government officials or whatever, someone from India? Where, did they come here and kill the person? Did that person go there and they killed them? What are we? What's happening here? Uh, it's real confusing. Basically, what they're saying is that the Indian government has operatives in Canada that killed somebody and or threatened oh, other people. Oh, okay. I mean, okay, all right, I, I, maybe that's true. I have no reason to think it's For not. For what reason, though? We still don't know. That's another question. Well, the, the RCMP, despite we've got interference and, and, and threats like this happening right now from Iran, China, Russia, probably the U.S., and, and now India. India was the one that I thought was kind of the low-profile one where – we're colleagues. I mean, we have a great relationship with India. We had a great relationship with India. Now they want nothing to do with us. And and this seemed like a thing a year ago that never really went anywhere. But then just randomly, out of the blue, on Thanksgiving Monday, the RCMP decides to hold a news conference to say that there's a threat to Canadians from the Indian government. And the Indian government doesn't want any of it. They say Trudeau is just doing this for electoral reasons. Okay. Can I tell you, I kind of believe that. I, I don't know why we started this up with India now, but, you know, two days before this happened, and this is another thing that was just a gong show, two days before this happened, 30 liberal members of parliament, these are elected liberals that work for Justin Trudeau, all signed a letter calling for Trudeau to resign. And apparently, according to our colleague, Mercedes Stevenson at Global National, the prime minister didn't know about it right away because that new plane that we just bought him doesn't even have Wi-Fi on it. Shut up. The prime minister didn't know until they landed in Hawaii on the way back from Laos to refuel. He decided to pull out his phone and take it out of airplane mode. That was when he found out that a whole faction of his caucus wants to get rid of him. Then they carried on back to Canada and now this comes out. It's weird. I don't know what's I, going on. I don't really know... Guys, I'd love to tell you, is there actually a threat or is it possible that what's going on here is they don't want to give any daylight or any news real estate to the 30 liberals that want to get rid of Trudeau. So this has just come back up to do that. I mean, that could be a stretch to do that. You'd have to get the RCMP in on it. Would they just willy nilly come out and hold a news conference? And on Thanksgiving, I'll give you longer to think about it. On, Would they? On Thanksgiving? Yeah. Like, it's just such a weird, like, the whole thing sounds weird to me, but maybe it's, like, normal and I just don't pay attention to it. So I'll tell you what, what I'm reading in the uh, uh, the people who, mainly people who do not like the prime minister, but some, some right-wing type media types, they seem to think that this is a distraction technique by the prime minister to get people to not focus on the liberals who want Trudeau gone, but to create a new adversary and, and try and rally the country behind some patriotic, let's, let's screw over India type movement. Hmm. I don't know if that's actually going to happen, but it, it's an interesting one. I, I didn't see that coming, but apparently there is a threat here from India. Diddy huh. got his first lawsuits filed. Yeah, so, so six were filed. And we didn't hear any other names other than Diddy's. Uh, and these go back, like, obviously to the 90s, from the 90s up until 2021, at least the ones that were filed uh, so far. Tony Busby says more are coming. As we know, he's representing 120 people, men and women. 
And uh, you've, D- Diddy's kind of screwed as I look these over. Now, these are all obviously alleged at this point. One of the p- people said that he was working at Macy's in New York City. I don't know if that's where Diddy met up with him at the time. Uh, but that was one of the cases. The other one is the, the first alleged underage victim as well in this. This person was a 16-year-old boy at the time, so definitely underage. They say the new lawsuits accuse Diddy of a multitude of things, including raping and sodomizing women, raping and sodomizing men, and molesting a 16-year-old boy. There's more than 100 alleged victims that are in the process of taking legal action. But again, I heard it more this weekend. We might not get to know the worst of it because some of the people who are involved are going to try and avoid a lawsuit by taking a payout. Yeah. By the way, with Diddy in jail, presumably somebody is controlling his money or his money's frozen. Who's paying off these victims so that they don't sue him? I don't know. I, that's a good good question. I'm not sure where that payment comes from um, or if payment is frozen. Maybe it's a good question for, like, Sandra Ziskind. If we can get Sandra back on the on the pod, which we will, by the way. By the end of the month, we'll have Sandra back on the pod. Maybe she can give us an indication as to what usually tends to happen, even if it's someone with money who is settling lawsuits. Where does that money come from? I really don't know, but, yeah. I mean, interesting topic for sure. Uh, they say now... That And this is going to be probably a huge one for Joe Rogan. Donald Trump has agreed to go on the Joe Rogan podcast. Yeah, of course. You can make prop bets on this now. Oh, really? What what are we uh, betting on? Will Donald Trump be a guest on the Joe Rogan experience before Election Day? Yes, minus 600 odds. Great. Will Kamala Harris be a guest before Election Day? Minus 165. Yes, plus 125. No, Hmm. that's a small probability that she will appear. Will Rogan ask Trump how much he weighs? Do you think? Would you put 10 bucks on it? I don't know. Like, I don't listen to Joe Rogan's pod. I'm like one of the only people in the world who doesn't listen to it. Does he ask those kind of questions? No, I think it's just one of those things that people want to know. How much do you actually weigh? Okay, maybe he will. I could see like, I'm not going to say no for sure because Joe Rogan might. Donald Trump is uh, well known as someone who does not drink alcohol or consume Mm. cigarettes or marijuana. He's, I guess, as you would say, fairly clean. Will Trump drink alcohol on the podcast? Plus 150 odds. Will he smoke marijuana? Minus 200 odds. If Donald Trump goes on Joe Rogan mere weeks before the U.S. election and sparks up a doob (laughs) <laughs> or, or tips a Coors I Light. I will not. I cannot picture that. I can't picture it either. Will what will be said first, UFC or Elon Musk? They're both going to come up. There's no way Joe Absolute. Rogan's not asking Trump about UFC. That'll have Absolutely. to be first. Absolutely, I think both at some point. Hard to say which one first. Will they go into the area of UFOs and UAPs and artificial intelligence? That's one thing that I think regular people want to know, that podcasters like this one here are uniquely qualified to ask our leaders. And I think that's why leaders don't like to go on shows like this typically Mm -hmm. because they're going to get asked. If Joe Rogan doesn't ask him about stuff like that, I feel like that's a missed opportunity. Trump's been in the White House, highest security clearance you can get. He knows if there's aliens. He knows who killed Kennedy. He knows if 9-11 was an inside job. He knows where all the bodies are buried. He has to know. It's fair to ask him, right? Sure. You know what I find interesting about these podcasts that both Kamala and now Donald apparently will be will be doing anyway? Is that in all these situations, I feel like they're not going to gain votes they didn't already have. People's minds like, are made up. You know up. what I mean? Well, no, well, especially when like the demographic is just off. Like if Kamala Harris went on Joe Rogan, there's a chance someone could get swayed. Most of them are going to be maybe Donald Trump supporting people. Not all of them. Not try to paint everybody with one brush, but I think so. Would you not agree with that? So it's like you're already at a point where all, a lot of those people are probably going to get your vote. And then he refuses to do like the Call Her Daddy podcast, which Kamala Harris did, for example, where maybe he could sway people who listen to that podcast that otherwise wouldn't be. They're kind of just it, talking to their broad, own people. Yes. Yeah. It's like, is that the is that I know you'll get airtime regardless, like and snippets of your interview will be out there for anyone to see. And maybe that's what they're doing it for. But in my mind, I just think that you're going after the wrong group when you're doing things like that. I think Kamala should be also doing Joe. And I think that Donald should also be doing 
call her daddy, or even if, if that's below you, I get it, or whatever, do another one that she's done before. I'd like to see an evenness in nature here between the two of them, you know? I, uh, I, I'm i not a, opposed to that. I, I think it would should definitely happen for different audiences, for sure. I think the problem is these politicians, because the pods are left or right, too, in some cases, so Joe Rogan would probably, probably be labeled more right. Kamala Harris figures if she goes in and does that, he's going to try and make her look stupid. And I have a feeling Trump has a feeling that the call her daddy folks are going to try and make him look stupid. Yes. And nobody yes. wants to look stupid. That's why. And I'm sure that is why. I'm sure that the, to them, the benefits are not going to outweigh all the negatives. Have you uh, been following that at all? What's going on down there with the polls or anything like that? No, I mean, I stand by what I've always said. I don't think polls are accurate at all for the most part. You know what I mean? So, no, I don't follow that at all. I mean, I, I listen to what people have to say about it. I don't like to get too involved in conversations regarding it, but... I'll dabble in some things. I'll, I mostly um, look on hashtags. You know what I mean? What are people saying now? What are people saying now? But I don't spend too much time on it. Shit. We are out of time. Yeah. Okay. Shit. All right. Well, we got to go, everybody. But hey, we're just getting started on this short work and school week. We've got another After 9 coming tomorrow, Thursday, and probably Friday. Have yourselves a great day, and we will see you back here tomorrow. We have a new contest on the radio shows, by the way. Tomorrow morning, listen for the sound of the Sunwing jet. Text in your name and Sunwing when you hear it. If we pick you, you're in to win. On Friday, somebody's going to win a trip to the Rio de Namar in Cancun, Mexico. Now, it's going to be a fun phone call. Radio doesn't give away as many trips as it used to. Yeah. I'm glad we're getting back to that. Same thing. That's going to be really, really fun. So by all means, get your name in there and listen to the show. We'd appreciate it. Have a great one, friends. A YouTube star totaled his $200,000 McLaren after he live streamed himself texting while driving in the rain. Even more tragic, he survived. The Supreme Court declined to hear R. Kelly's appeal of the decision in his sex crimes case, or as I like to call it, it's the remix to conviction. <laughs> R. Kelly is going to prison. LeBron James and his son Bronny made history when they became the first ever father-son duo to play an NBA game together. But there was some confusion when LeBron called a timeout and his son went and stood in the corner. 